We're on. Hello. I think it's, it's a customary thing uh, to wait for people to join. Okay. Come on, come on in. Come on in. Look at us. Two dudes. Um, how long are you supposed to wait? It looks like people are piling in right now, so. Hope everybody's doing doing well. How long has it been? It's been about uh, a couple a months. A year. A couple months since we did our last Instagram live. Feels like longer. Sorry, we were busy. So yeah, uh, so we're gonna answer some questions, give some updates. Um, I had uh, today's my th three week anniversary of my surgery, three Thursdays ago. He's got, he's got a nice. Is that a ball? Sling. Cute little red ball. You have to hold on to. So part of my rehabilitation is like gets a, gets the blood flowing again, like oh. um, because it's you gotta be. I gotta be in the stress ball. I gotta be in the sling. Uh, so my, it's like, am I, I'm in the sling most of the day. Jeez. I got restless arms. I'm getting restless. Restless arm syndrome. <laughs> That'll be our next single name is restless arm. <laughs> Ronnie called me about 12 days after the uh, surgery and asked if there's anything he could do. <laughs> it was, uh, That's not true. I was in the I clear. Asked, it, was, was, it, was, it, was, it was almost two weeks. But I asked if you, if you wanted to lift to the thing. I was early and then late. <laughs> See, uh, I, I, uh, I'll pick you up. Yeah, I had a, I had the, the truck ready, with with the seat to the bed. That's my dog. She wants to party. Um, okay. What else? Bottom line is, I'm a good friend. Uh, we've been. Uh, let's see. Let's start. We got some quite. Let's start with questions. Yeah, you you start. I'm gonna wrangle this beast. Come on, get over here. Go up there. So it's like a hit to um, There's no stop here. What's something you've not missed about touring? This is from APS Smile Dog. Being away from family, the food, what, what have you not missed about touring? <sighs> I, my first thing that came, comes to mind is um, airports. Yeah, the, the um, passport control. Yeah, airport situate air, airport. You just you know, it's a it's a luxury to be able to travel, but we've done a lot of traveling, and you know, it leaves a mark on you. The airport and the airplane. Yeah, I don't miss that mark. No, and it's you know one of the things about being being home is to be with your family. A lot of times we would go and we'd come back, and for us a six week tour. Or a, Six month tour feels, you know, quick. It's, it happens in a flash, yeah. and you come back, and your parents are older, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you sort of detach from life on the ground. So that's been nice to be. Be here. Yeah. My health is good. My, I'm at the as healthiest. I'm the healthiest I've I've ever been, as um in seven years. That's good. Yeah. Eating at home and. <laughs> Uh, this is from I think it's Joyce at Under That Spell. Will you guys ever do another live album uh, video like like at the Royal Albert Hall? It was also nice seeing behind the scenes of a show. Yeah, we try. So we we were gonna do it. Uh, we were gonna do it on imploding the no. I mean on wonderful, 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 wonderful. Yeah. And. It's a shame that we didn't capture it because those were some. We had some really great nights. We did a couple of. We did a couple of shows. I remember where we um, we were playing like really spectacular places, like uh, like this. There's a place in Italy we recorded, and we have mm -hmm. that. That was even further back. Yeah, but I mean, we have shows that we may release. Yeah, we'll have to find a way to to, to put it all together. But we did consider doing it, and we'll we'll definitely probably you know. Find a way, but if you saw, if you see, if you saw us at, you know, if you YouTube uh, like Glastonbury, that last Glastonbury, you know, we had a lot of nights like that that felt really great during 
the wonderful, wonderful tour. It would have been, it's a shame that we didn't capture it. Yeah. Here we go. Favorite place you recommend when visiting Las Vegas? This is from Jenny at Kings the Killers. Well, I think the food or our hotel or... Have we already plugged Lotus of Siam? Lotus of Siam. Lotus of Siam. When, when we go back to record or to visit family or whatever it is, I mean, I always go to Lotus. Mm -hmm. It's also a good idea to check out um, Old Downtown. It's a different sort of vibe down there. It's um, There's an arts district and there's a lot of like cool bars, or at least there was before the pandemic. Maybe everything is shut down now, but... Um, That'd be a good place to explore. We played it. We played in Thailand, and some some people from the royal family came to the gig, and we actually brought up. They knew about Lotus of Siam in Th in Thailand. That's yeah. a, that's it's the real deal, and they gave it their they they signed off on. What it, is right? the crispy rice thing I like? Nam Khao Todd, get the Todd. <laughs> All right. Uh... This is from the Killer's History. How much did you have to pay Google to use the Google Translate Lady Voice and say love? <laughs> we just stole it. So Google's going to have to come after us for that. Chase us. Uh, Steven Strickland. Getting right to it. True or false? The new album is almost finished. It's, it's finished. finished. I mean, it's finished, yeah. We're, ma we're basically in the mastering phase. I guess that's one of the things that we're here to talk to you all about. Mm -hmm. Um... It will come out this year. We were hoping for, you know, an early summer release, but there's been um, basically vinyl pressing. What is it? A company or a manufacturing? All, all the manufacturing of vinyl. They're stuff. all inundated with everybody that held their albums back for <clears throat> because of COVID, and now they're all, you know, trying to get their albums out and making this this push, and so that's. Because we want to release everything simultaneously, we're running it into a, a wall. But it will be this year, and it is finished. Yeah, that's okay. It gives us time to make tweaks. Yeah. So that's what's happening. Uh, and it's good. It's different. <laughs> I want to explore... Um, what do you want to explore? I want to explore... Um, talking about the record but yeah we were told not to let the cat out of the bag too much yeah but it is but it's uh it is finished, it's uh, finished. that's all we have <laughs> this is a good this one kind of made me brought me back and made me think about things this is leah from heaven and a wildflower at heaven and a wildflower a uh, biggest inspiration in general when you were first starting and it made me think back to exactly what it was that we were listening to because we all had our own things that we were bringing to the table, but there were these. Th we had to agree on 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 some things, and I was thinking about this on the drive after after you called. Driving back, getting my U-Haul. Yeah. I wasn't. There, there was a. We were so new, and we didn't. <clears throat> I was used to playing with everybody in town, except for you guys, and part the most fun I have with with music is being able to explore with other people and that in itself is sort of an inspiration that's inspiring and to be able to like uh, um, see what other people bring out in you or, or vice versa and um, I remember that but that was I, I miss I miss <laughs> I miss those times <sighs> but the inspiration in general I think it was it was there was a combination of, I started I remember I was I th this may not be new information for people. I was heavy into like Lust for Life, for, um, Iggy Pop, that album. Um, and then Bowie had a new record out at the time called Heathen. And we were definitely into that. We were listening, we, you know, you, people talk about Duran Duran. I mean, there's a reason why that gets brought up. We were, you know, some of the, you know, John Taylor, um, one of the great bassists of all time playing in Duran Duran and that definitely had a I think an impact on Mark um what else were we listening to Heathen he man I remember that record shout out to our boy Matt Chamberlain on the drums yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, so there was a lot of that. There was a lot. You too. I mean, if you listen to all these things that I've done, I think it's definitely, you know, it just goes straight back to, you know, it's got these this gospel progression that I would link right to. I still haven't found what I'm looking for or something like that from you two. Mm -hmm. This one, do you have a, what's your favorite Oingo Boingo song? Do you have a favorite? I have a, I have a few. Yeah, I love Oingo Boingo. Um, it was like just edgy enough for me. So that was that that was more that was my punk rock was Oingo Boingo because you were probably listening to more like punk rock. Yeah, <laughs> they were, but they had they had a lot. But they were like prog punk kind of. They had some cool. They were. They probably uh, had a punk mm -hmm. ethos in a way. I guess they were doing things different. That's Heidi, Fruity Pear. I have cool. I don't know if I ever shared this story. I'll try to make this fast. How much was it? I um I worked at Spago when I was eighteen in Caesar's Palace. And Danny, El Danny Elfman came in, and it was his birthday dinner. And he was with his wife and, 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 and another couple. And we were, there was a strict policy at this restaurant to not mess with celebrities or musicians or whoever it was, because they're just coming in to eat, and, and, and we're supposed to be above that. But I, I, you know, I got so excited because I was a huge Oingo Boingo fan. And I broke, I broke the broke rules. The code. And I went over, and he wasn't in my my section, but I, I went into this, you know, this forbidden section, and I approached Danny Elfman, and I, and I told him, you know, I mustered up whatever, I love you, and, and I love what you've done, I'm thankful for you, whatever it is, you know, the thing that you say. And and then he saw me, I got in trouble from uh, from the general manager, and he, uh, the next day, I was working the next morning, and I'm I'm out there in the forum <clears throat> shops and I'm doing the tables and do, and all that. And I look over and I see him, Elfman, and he's walking through the forum shops by Gucci and and Fendi, and I and he just keeps going, 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 and he goes straight to the the hostess stand, and he and I see him and he's uh, scribbling uh, and then he leaves, and then I found you know obviously they gave it to me. He he had written me a note. You still uh, have it? I gotta find it. I have to have it somewhere. But he wrote my name. He remembered my name and signed it and good luck and all this stuff. And but I, I take that with me because I also had experiences with people that were just jerk. You've had that. Mm -hmm. And so when we meet people that are fans of the band, that I think that speaks to how I you know am around fans now. The way that Danny Elfman treated me, mm -hmm. and so I'm thankful for that. And anyway, favorite one. I, Private Life is probably my favorite Oingo Boingo song. I do love private life and on the outside. Uh, who do you listen to these days besides your music? <laughs> we do uh, listen to a lot of our music. <laughs> and what musicians and or bands of any decades are you big fans of? Thank you. That's from uh, the Euros Bejesus. Okay. What do you got? Who have you been listening to? Um, gosh. Okay. It's a weird mix. It's a weird mix. I think my favorite record of 2020, or maybe mm -hmm. it's 2021, mm -hmm. is uh, the Ultramano record by Idols. Oh okay, yeah, you talk about that a lot. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I can't stop listening to it. It's such a smart record and echoes a lot of um, like uh, just kind of stuff that I grew up on and and uh, I, I love everything about it. There's yeah. not one thing I don't like about it. <clears throat> so kudos to those guys. But also, a lot of uh, I've been a lot of Chris Steely. Mm -hmm. He just had a new record come out. He's from Nickel Creek, actually. Um, speaking of Nickel Creek, uh, Sarah Watkins, who's a, in Nickel Creek and also a solo artist herself, mm -hmm. played on our record. Right. A it lot. Was, uh, I mean. She, she elevated a, a few of the songs, like amazing, really great. Okay, yeah. what's the one song you wish you had written by another artist? We uh, we get asked this, and when you're when you're on the spot, it's I should have warned you we got this question because you always just just throw something out by the Beatles or something like that. Yeah. But I, th I did see this yesterday, this question, and I, and I thought, well, let me think of think of something that, that I don't feel on the spot about. And this is from Soph. 
at Don Bro Soap. <laughs> and uh, I came up with one that I always neglect to remember. I always forget is um, the Stranglers. There's all, always the sun. Oh, I heard that oh. not so long ago. What a beautiful, beautiful song. I you love that song. Written, written that. Yes. There's a, some great lines in the verses about, you know, the, hey, how many times has the weatherman made you laugh? Just like so many great uh, image images that you don't typically hear in pop music. Freaking love it. Sean at ST Cameron, any chance you'll do that covers album you spoke about years ago? I doubt it. <laughs> we should just stop it with that covers. We like to do covers. Yeah. And pay, you know, tip our hat, tip <clears> the <throat> hat to people that we that uh, that we love. And but I don't know when when we brought that up, I don't know what we were thinking. I mean, if you have if you want to write songs and keep doing that, I, you'd rather do that than do covers usually. Typically. It scratches more of an itch. Yeah. I think the only time we end up doing covers is like um, if we're in a town or somebody's uh -huh. at a show, or if, if there's like an impetus to, to do that. Or sometimes if, um, if part of our part of a song that we have reminds us or mm -hmm. transition of a, a song, we'll play around with that a little bit. But it's a lot. It's a lot to dedicate, and especially you want to do right by you know these these people and, and do a good version of it. I got one for you from Christine Zamansky. Mm. Ronnie, what are some of your favorite transitions or fills to play live or that you're looking forward to playing? I love the build at the end of the bridge and running towards a place. Is that the fill? That, is that the R.A.L. suggested fill? The build thing that she's talking about? Is that the... It's the Space Man Phil. I just thought that I brought that up because I thought it was kind of cool too. Yeah, I don't know what Phil she's referring. I think to. it's the Space Man. I think it's well, it's it's. So Ariel had something to do with Ariel Rexshide had something to do with that song with with helping produce that song. Mm -hmm. Well, I, or, or not? He, mixed he was it. mixing it, and I think we were. As he we were suggested it, he loves this Phil and Space Man. Oh no, he did that in at the Is up it, at the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. No, we wrote it yeah, with... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We, the, so, yeah, Running Towards right. a Place came about when, when Ariel was in Park City. That's right. Yeah. Now it's going together. But he, he, he's obsessed with this fill that, that's in Spaceman. <laughs> and it's basically a, one of the same exact fill, Christine, mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that is in Spaceman. So if you can find those fills, it should be pretty dang similar. I, I can't do much else. But what about... <laughs> What are some of your favorite transitions or fills to play, though? Transitions. I had, um, on the last tour, I had to write it, I had to read it. I almost had to read it every time because it was such a weird fill that sort of happened accident on, um... Oh, Shot at the Night? No. no uh, oh, God. Uh, the painting. Here comes the calling. The calling. Um, at the end of the calling, there's this, like, um... Just a funny fill that sort of lands on its feet, but I don't know how I landed on my feet um, recording it. It was just sort of... I only like to do, like, maximum three takes, and so I'll do one where it's just sort of getting warmed up, two where it's the thing, and then three to get crazy. And I think we chose three as that take for that fill, and I, somehow I landed on my feet, but I had to, like, transcribe it and, like, write it out every time, and that was fun. Yeah, you don't know what's going on back yeah. there. <laughs> Uh, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just looking at devastating gigs. Will there be? I like this. Uh, will there be much synth on the new album? I love synth. I love the synth. Ruby Kite. We love synth too. Um, uh, there is some. There is some synth. It's not a. It's not. It's not an obvious player. Yeah, not really. No. But if you look, if you um, the last album though had had a lot. Had mm -hmm. some great mo synth moments. Mm -hmm. um, we're not we're not throwing it out forever, but this album has got a different. Um, we used a lot of feeling to it, like um, samplers. Um, I think one of them is called the MS One, made by Korg, where we would make sounds and sample it. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> something happens when you sample it, where it sort of degrades, degrades it in a musical way. Um, and we were sort of, you know, coming up with, with 
Sonic's that way. Yeah, Rita was is it's more yeah I would say it's more Sonic than than part driven mm -hmm. the synth on this record in a way that that you know mm -hmm. obviously was really great at. Uh, what is making this is from Thomas Eliasson. What is making an al album like when all the songs just appear and keep coming? What is that like versus your past albums? So yeah, he's re referencing something I've mentioned. I mentioned it on the, the Ezra podcast, I think, how it just kind of fell in our laps. It was not, it's it's exciting and it's a it's a blessing to to be able to have the songs come like that. But it also there's this urgency to it because you need to you need to rank you really want to get it what it you know and, and wrestle it and 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 see it through and i think we did it so it is different the other one is more like piece by piece and hope for it to start to show itself and try to find threads and um and that's a great process and a fulfilling process too but this was the first time they ever came yeah like this well, yeah. um, I assume your pair show is canceled or postponed. Everything is sort of put on hold for um, obvious reasons, and we will <clears throat> believe us. We want to be back out with you guys, um, but we want to make sure it's safe to do it before we do it. Um, and um, it's also really hard, just from a uh, from the sort of a structural standpoint, where um, the promoters that are trying to do these shows can't get um, insurance. They're having a really hard time getting insurance without paying through the nose, and it's, it's, it's difficult. So I think everything has to sort of normalize before we can get back to doing shows, but we are, we are chomping at the bit. Yeah. And we're doing everything we can to, to, to make it smooth and safe. Okay. What song from Imploding the Mirage are you most looking forward to playing live in concert when it's time? I think we've... Uh, uh, I mean, who knows? We'll just, we'll just see, you know, I don't know what, you never know how, what's going to move you or move people till you do it. Yeah. You have it in your mind, and, yeah. then, it, then, it, and then you try it live, and, <laughs> and people just, you know, <laughs> I was pissed. That was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> should we, should we do any of these... Um, the thing where they request. Oh, people requesting. You mean like share a share a video? Yeah, where they do it. There it goes. Do you request? Request. Yeah, let's talk to Sarah Gar. You just turn it off. If it's, it's like if there was some profanity or something. Yeah, no profanity. Sarah. Hey, oh my guys. goodness. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm pretty good. Where are you? I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, you're not too far. Oh, yeah. No, not too far at all. You got, you got a question? I just wanted to say hi. Uh, um, hi. I, I kind of miss most of your live. Are you um, working? You're working on a new album? Any updates? Yeah, we just, it's going to come out this year and uh, it's, 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 the songs are all finished and we're just kind of mastering it right now. So we're excited to, to share that. That's awesome. I'm so excited. Oh. Ronnie, I have to say, um, my sister and I met you at a concert in St. Paul and we have one photo of you flipping the camera off and it's like my favorite photo ever. <laughs> all right. Charm school. Okay. All right, good to see you. Have fun. Uh, go to Grimaldi's. They got a Grimaldi's down oh, there, right? Yeah. Have Grimaldi's. Yeah. Oh no, go to Chris Chris Bianco's. Oh, pizza. that's right. Sorry. Chris Bianco. Kimmel. I haven't gone there still. Yeah. All right, how do we turn this up? Okay, we <laughs> good <laughs> to see you. We gotta uh, try somebody else. Okay, no bye. Offense. I, I want to keep her on. I want to keep her going. What? We're just gonna keep going here. <laughs> Not we don't know how to go back to normal. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> you want to do a couple more of those? Couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know how to get off of it now. Yeah. Mm. There's one. Oh, people are coming back on. Right. Sorry about that. Yeah. Grandpa Ron doesn't know how to work. Well, PCR. we're gonna figure this out. <laughs> Here, try this one. We'll try somebody else. Okay, again. There you go. 
This is Zach. Go live with Zach Killian. Well, if we just hit the X. There you go. Yo. Hey, Zach. No way. Zach attack. What's up, bro? How you guys doing? <laughs> How are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Where are you at? I'm in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Cool. Ooh. Yeah. Big UK fan. Do you guys watch sports at all in any college or anything? Or uh oh, University of Kentucky. No, I, you know college. I never got really into college sports. Yeah. We had a great we had a great basketball team in 1990, 89, 90, 91, and you know UNLV. Yeah. But we haven't had it since. So so that there was like this big fervor in Las Vegas at that time, but we had, but it's been, it hasn't been matched. Yeah. You guys, you guys, Kentucky's always got good teams though. Yeah, for sure. You know, I know you guys are baseball fans. I'm a big fan of the Reds, you know, you guys like the Dodgers, right? No, not, not a ton. No, you baseball fans? Uh, well, I, I like, I like to play baseball. Yeah. And, and I like, I used to follow like vintage baseball. Weird, weird. I was a weird kid. I, I'm right there with you. Hey, one question for you, Ronnie. I'm a drummer. Um, on the new album, what kind of drums, cymbals, gear, what are you using on it? Um, so, um, oh, what did I use on this one? So some, cro I, there was a, um, we did most of the, the tracking for the drums at, um, in Studio B in, at Sound City. And uh, we used uh, Tony Bird's drum set. He has like an old uh, Ludwig club date, at, you know, at 12, 14, 20. Yeah. And um, I was using that and I used a Craviato maple Craviato kit with just uh, various snares, some old ones. Uh, Matt Chamberlain, who's a, also another drummer, has a studio in the same complex and he let me borrow a couple of old solid shell um, Ludwig snares from the twenties, which are all over. Really, and just a lot of old um, uh, Karoop symbols. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Z Zildjian does it best, man. Your Craviato <laughs> snares, bro. On uh, I think you did a video with Zildjian back in the day. With oh, yeah. I think you were playing a matter of time. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The drum, the drums on that are just phenomenal. And the oh, thanks. Well, that's so. that's my drum tech, Rob White. He makes him sound nice. Yeah, yeah. Does all the work for you. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I'll let you guys go. You guys are huge inspirations. So I'll let you get some help. Thank you very much. Man. Yeah, it was nice to talk to you. Guys. See you. You hang up first because we don't know how to do it. I got gotcha. you. Okay. There, there we go. go. So I think we just pick somebody else if there's another one. We do one more. Ready? Herba. This could be interesting. It sounds far away. See you soon in Mexico. We'll play human in Mexico for sure. What's up? My man. Pork chop. Pork chop. Pork chop. How's it going? Bye -bye. I'm Argentina. Oh, great. How are oh, you? Okay. Hey, how's it going? I don't speak English. Oh, it's okay. How's it going down there? You all right? Todo bien. Todo bien. Todo bien. Bye bye. Bye. I love you. I bye. love you. Okay, that one for okay. Last one. Last one. Here we go. That was a really good one. Just got that thumbs up. Ruby. Do I need to take this off? Or? This is so fun. Bye bye. Oh. Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Oh my God. I cannot believe it. <laughs> I'm so happy to be with you. Oh, How are you? Fine. Well, I, I'm from Chile. I'm from Concepcion. And it's really cold in here. Cold? Mm. My, brother, yeah. my brother lived in uh, Viña del Mar. Ah, it's quite far years. away from where I am. Far from you? It's yeah. really far away. We've had some we are like seven or six or seven hours apart. I, I'm from Chile. Mm -hmm. I'm from Concepcion. And, and I have here. 
Yeah. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll see you uh, down there in, uh, what, 2022? Yeah. Sometime in 2022? We'll we, are, we are looking forward with my boyfriend right. uh, to see you. And, and I would like to ask you, okay. because my boyfriend's birthday is on uh, Sunday, 11, uh, April the 11th, if you can say happy birthday to him. Please, it will be the best, what? best What's his name? ever. Fabian. Fabian? Say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, just sing Fabian. it. Or... Happy birthday, Fabian. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay, You're so Fab... lovely. I really love you. Really, really love you. It's Good a dream you. come true being talking to you. It's Good to very, talk to you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. We yeah. love you. We hope to Bye. see you in Tigre so soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, so nice. No, you hang up. There we go. All right. All right. Okay. Well, that was nice. Pick me, Brandon. Pick this teacher. All right. Well. Yeah. Well, here's a good question. Okay. If you had the opportunity, opportunity to rewrite one killer song, which, whether lyrically or musically, which one would you choose? Would you rewrite it? Uh, would you rewrite it, or would you would you just let the let the moment? I mean, I'd have to. We'd have to go through each, you know, each song. I'm sure there's there's always things that you little regrets. Um, but but not not on every song. But yeah, I mean, there's also there's also something to just leaving leaving that that sort of that time alone, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but there's always an exception to the rule. All right. Can you talk? Uh, let's see. Any more? Wow. Is the lyric will beat the birds? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is the lyric will beat the birds down to Acapulco Bay a reference to Frank Sinatra's Come Fly With Me? Yes. Just a straight lift from Come Fly With Me. Um, uh, now when I hear those words, I only hear our melody, and I can't hear his melody. Oh, yeah. You just say the words, and we'll beat the birds down the Fuku Bay. Yeah. I think you're going to steal. <sighs> steal a diamond, not a piece of glass. Um, <laughs> we're, re we're reading your questions. What's your process of Stage production. When you come to Denver, tacos with queso. Mm. When you come to Denver, Colorado, lol. Um, I when you just seeing Denver though, I just have to tell you this. We've been me and my family watched. Um, there's four seasons of baskets, and Denver has a, plays a little bit of a role. It's Bakersfield. And then Denver has a little bit of a role in it. Oh. And um, it's just a, what a great show. It's sad that it ended. So yeah. I never saw it. I and saw it was a crazy show last night. I forget what it's called. It's crazy. So, Chris. <laughs> so, anyway, this is my, my Denver shout out. The Broncos. Onion Days or Youth Stampede? Huh. Oh, hell, who's asking that? Michael Murray. Michael Murray. I've, I've enjoyed both the, the Onion Days and the Youth Stampede, but, I, you know, the, the Youth Stampede is a little bit more exciting than Onion Days. So I guess I go with Youth Stampede. Favorite place to play in? Vegas? To play gigs? Mm-hmm. And where do you see these questions at? What's been your favorite place to perform in Las Vegas? Meg. I mean, I don't know. We played all. We played every. You know, probably the weirdest ones. <laughs> we played a restaurant once, early days. Oh yeah, that was bee soul, like soul food. It wasn't soul food. It was. Yeah, it was bee. It, it was. was. Yeah, it was still. It was still bee soul food, mm -hmm. but they just like let bands play there. Um, it's a pretty famous, I've seen like, I saw, before, did he die, the, the Jackson father? Joe. Joe? Yeah. I saw him coming out of there.
because I used to live near there. Mm-hmm. So it was a pretty famous soul food place. Um, but yeah, we played. I remember it was the first time we had played. Jenny was a friend of mine, and in, 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 in the structure was as it is on Hot Fuss. Yeah. So before it may we, it may have been a little bit longer. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, what's your favorite song of all time? Is there any chance of you guys singing more Day and Age songs live? Uh, Day and Age has we do we we, we do Human, yeah. we do Spaceman, we do Dustland. We did yeah. last album. We did I Can't Stay like half of the tour. That was a fun. Um, we've done This Is Your Life, you know, I don't know, yeah, a lot. Yeah, we've done a shit ton. Yeah, we do, we lose Where you been? touch. Where you been? Uh, yeah. Ronnie, do you think you guys will include Flesh, flesh and Bone or Battle Born on any future set list? Um, maybe. I think we're sort of amassing a huge collection of songs, and I think we're getting to the point where we could probably carve out, uh, you know, a new set list every night, um, and maybe get away with it. But we're just we're just suckers. We 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 like for everybody to have a good t- have a good time, and so you know, we have to you know we sort of feel compelled to to play the staples. Mm-hmm. But we might add a couple of you know zingers in there. Favorite Depeche Mode album? Ooh, I, I I'm not. Construction time. Uh, no, <laughs> construction time again. I love Ultra from uh, Depeche Mode. I have, a, but but I think Songs Faith and Devote. You know what a great run though to go from like you like the new shit. You no, know, well to go from Violator to Songs of Faith and Devotion to Ultra. Those those three that 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 three for me is it's just just an incredible run. Um, Martin's just a Beast writer. He is a beast. Yeah. Will you consider doing acoustic piano performances of Dying Breed, like the beautiful version you did of Blood? <laughs> That's from Amaranth. How do you say that? Amaranth. 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 Um, uh, yeah. No, it's it, you know the I love the outro. I was thinking. I actually was thinking about the other day with strings and you know we could do something like that for Dying Breed. This one's from Eliza. A BC. Sorry if I'm butchering any names. Brandon, in terms of writing, did the TK7 come to you as a continuum of imploding mirage, or was it a process mm. completely different compared to imploding mirage? Totally different. Yeah, it's a total departure um, from the from you know wonderful, wonderful, and imploding mirage is sort of companion records, which is crazy that we did you know to think of now in retrospect. It's kind of a big undertaking. Yeah, but it, it, it was a natural out. thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and so this is a big big departure. Okay, let's stop it. <laughs> we'll try to do this, and we, we should do it once a month. <clears throat> what do you think? We yeah, start. I'm 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 down for that. Favorite photographer? Oh man, that's hard. You say Dorothy Lane? Dorothy Lane. Dorothy Lane. Edward Weston. Ansel Adams. Anton. Anton Corbine. So many. It's like, who's your favorite musician? They're just all different kinds of people that see things too. All right, we love you guys. Off to bed, Grandpa. Thank you. Love it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for for um, for hanging with us. And we'll do it again. And I might just keep this count open on my phone and take you on the drive to California with me tomorrow. Bye.